Welcome to our lecture online. Now that we know how to solve linear equations and we also know how to graph linear equations, there are some great applications for these kind of things in algebra. So here what we're going to do is introduce you to five specific types of applications. We're going to talk about linear depreciation, linear cost, linear profit, linear demand, and linear supply. And so let me explain a little bit what each of these mean. First of all, depreciation. Let's say you have a company that needs to buy a machine in order to produce something, and so you're going to initially spend some money called the purchase price. As you're using the machine over a period of years, after a while the machine becomes old, you may want to replace it with a new machine, and so you want to liquidate the machine. You want to get whatever you can get for it at the liquidation price. And so the difference in what you paid for it versus what you can get for it when you sell it after a certain amount of time, that's what's called the depreciation or the lost value of the machine. And you can see that as time goes by, the machine is worth less and less and less. So that's one example. Or, for example, you buy a brand new car. You buy the brand new car at the purchase price when it's new. And after you've had it for a while, you want to sell the car and try to buy a new car. And so you get the liquidation price, whatever you can get for it. The difference between what you paid for it and what you can get for it when you sell it as a used car. That's a depreciation in the value of the car. Then the second type of application is what we call the cost application. Typically when you produce something, let's say you have a, a, a restaurant, a little restaurant, you produce hamburgers, well you have a certain amount of fixed cost. Even if you don't sell a single hamburger, you still need to turn on the lights, you need to hire people to run the, your place of business. You have a certain amount of fixed cost every day and that will be independent as to how many hamburgers you sell. Then, if, as you sell hamburgers, you also need to buy the buns and the meat and the lettuce and the mayonnaise and all that. And so for each hamburger sold, you have a certain amount of cost. And so the total cost to produce hamburgers is the fixed cost plus what we call the variable cost. Now notice the quantity of hamburgers sold is the independent variable. The dependent variable is the cost to produce those hamburgers. And so you can see that as you produce more and more hamburgers, the cost goes up. And so that's the relationship between what goes into the equation and what comes out of the equation. Same over here. This would be the independent variable, how much time has elapsed, and this would then be the dependent var variable, the value of the object that you're dealing with. The third type of uh, application is called the profit equation. Now the profit is equal to the revenue minus the cost. And so you can see that if, for example, you're selling hamburgers, you're going to get a certain amount of money when you sell the hamburgers, but of course when you don't sell any hamburgers, your profit is negative because it costs you a certain amount of money, the fixed cost, to run your place. Once you start selling hamburgers, now you begin to make money off of each hamburger, and eventually the total amount of money that it costs to produce the hamburgers will break even. You'll make zero profit after a certain amount of hamburgers, but then if you make uh, produce more hamburgers and sell more hamburgers, you're beginning to make a profit. So here you can see that's the profit equation. And again, the quantity of hamburgers that you sell is the independent variable. The profit will be your dependent variable. But then when we go to the next topic, the demand equation, again, these are linear functions. The way in which we can look at it changes a little bit. I like the idea of calling this the dependent variable and calling this the independent variable. Let me explain. Let's say that you own a store, a grocery store, and you're trying to sell bananas. If the price is really high, if it's $10 a pound, you may not sell any bananas. So if you set your price very high, the independent variable, you're not going to get a lot of demand. Nobody's going to buy your bananas. As you begin to lower the price, the number of people buying bananas is going to increase. And the lower the price becomes, the greater your demand. So I like to call this the quantity demanded, and I call, like to call this the price. So this becomes the independent variable, and that becomes the dependent variable. And when you look at it, it seems to make more sense. Then we can also have the supply graph. Again, linear supply. Now, notice that at the very limits of our curves, it doesn't really work. The demand curve is usually a second order curve, and the supply curve tends to be a second order curve as well. But at least a linear example or a linear application works fairly well for a particular range. And often to make it simple, we use linear functions like this. So again, let's think of this as the 
dependent variable and this is an independent variable. If the price is really low, nobody wants to produce it because they can't make a profit. So the quantity supplied by the producers will be very low. Matter of fact, it might even be zero if the price is really low. Then, as the price that you can get for it goes up, the supply goes up as well. When you can make more money off of something, more people will want to produce it. And so notice that eventually these two graphs will be on top of each other and there'll be a point where there's an equilibrium between the demand and the supply curve or demand and supply uh, graph. And that's of course where things tend to fall. Now we'll talk about that later when we solve multiple equations and multiple unknowns. That's for a later time. Here we simply want to look at the demand curve and the supply curve separately. Again, we think of this as the dependent variable. The amount that will be supplied will depend upon the price that you can get for the product. And so these are very good applications of linear equations. So we'll attack each one of these separately and show you some examples of how to work these out. And that is how it's done. Not bad, eh? On the fly. <laughs> All right.